It's come to this. These people wandering around Toronto's Pearson Airport got a tip about a passenger on an incoming flight. Someone from Iran, reportedly someone close to the murderous regime. Someone may be hoping to slip in unnoticed. Why are you coming here? Not a chance. You are working for the Iranian regime. What are you doing in Canada? Multiple phones aimed at the person, and this arrival is suddenly a public shaming exercise. We've blurred all their faces. The CBC News has not confirmed any of the allegations. You are working for terrorist regime. Our young people are getting hanged on the street. Disruptive enough to attract the attention of baffled officers. Yeah, because as you've seen, bring it down. Okay? There's no need for this shit. She just came to Canada. She used to work for the Iranian regime. And we, we like to know who has given her a visa. And we want to is Canadian government to investigate that. Okay. Well, this, this is not anything that is Canadian business. Pardon me? Okay. Well, I mean, what, what I mean is it's not anything that is... What am I trying to? Well, because you said you, this is not Canadian business. That is no, I no, think what, I mean, what I mean is what I mean is it's it's for Kane Board Services to investigate. Right. right. Did you hear what he first said? This is not Canadian business. That answer angered protesters who say this is why they take matters into their own hands. This is not acceptable. Canadian government convinced Canada just doesn't get that it's being used by those close to the regime as a place to escape to. Plenty others do get it. Okay, anything about developments with any of the cases? Did you want to pose the question? A more sedate but just a serious uh, gathering of what are effectively regime chasers. Yeah. But then when you look at that person Vancouver lawyer Mojde Shahiri with volunteers collecting tips on people in Canada with suspicious ties to the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Uh, allegation that the mm -hmm. family of IRGC member is in Canada and engaged in some activity. Yeah, we can pursue this for sure. All right. These people are not people that we want to have in Canada. They're terrorists. All tips explored sometimes with private sure. investigators. When and if there's evidence, they go to authorities. Right now, they're looking at some 200 potential people. Wonderful. This sounds a bit creepy. You know, it sounds a little bit like, like vigilantes, and there's something about it that doesn't sit right. Keep in mind who we are talking about. Do you want these people to roam around in Canada unchecked? Are you uh, okay with that? I don't think so. So if Canada was doing what it's supposed to do to keep Canada safe, there would be no need for anything that we are doing. They say they're careful. No one in this group will approach the suspected regime members. But there's real anxiety here. They only formed in the fall as the protests in Iran were at their peak, and they're getting busier. The fear building that those affiliated with the brutal regime might sense their time in Iran is coming to an end. So they're looking for a place to move to with their money and families, and Canada seems open. Even within the laws that we have, they should not be able to come to Canada, but they keep coming. So I'm as uh, shocked as anyone else, and I don't have an answer for that. People sometimes ask me, you're a lawyer, how is this happening? I really don't know. Attentive and fearful citizens have made changes before. These images taken last year at a gym in Ontario. You might not recognize this man, but an Iranian dissident living in Canada did and made a lot of noise about it. This man is the former head of the Tehran Police Department, Mortizi Talai, the man who happened to be in charge when Canadian photojournalist Zara Kazemi was murdered in Tehran's Avon prison. What was he doing here? For weeks last fall, CBC sent questions to the Canadian government about this man's presence. Not long after those emails, he was officially put on a sanctions list. There are expectations Canada will do more than that. The Prime Minister effectively promised it. We know there are people in Canada now who have benefited from the corrupt, from the horrific regime in Iran to live a good life in Canada. Will we say no more? 
Strong words, but not nearly enough action for those taking to the streets. Women, life, freedom! Women, life, freedom! So this is interesting. We're just keeping an eye on this protest in Thornhill, just outside of Toronto. It's been going on for months, every Friday. Sometimes the crowd is huge, sometimes it's small. Consistently, these people say they are so frustrated at not being heard by Canada and Canadian authorities. Why here? What are you worried about right here? Because we are sure they have relationship, close relationship with Islamic Republic of Iran. We want to ask, please watch them, investigate them. The they, it seems, are people reportedly connected with the nearby mosque, an allegation denied. But fear and fury remain. Justice for Iran! These demonstrations can get rough. At this very spot, a man reportedly tried to run down protesters. He was charged with dangerous driving, fleeing police, and possession of weapons. This gentleman in here. Some take their accusations right to people's front doors. Note the body armor on this man. Anger boiling. He's working with Iranian regime. Hi, good to meet you. It feels like this has the potential to get dangerous. There is the threat of excess, of people going too far, of people being slandered, and I have seen examples of that. Kaveh Shirouz is a human rights activist who's among those discreetly tracking, not confronting regime affiliates here in Canada. But he shares the raw anger of those who take it further. I have personally been in many meetings with government officials saying, folks, you have, this is a real threat to this country. Aside from being just generally unfair, it's also a threat to this country. And we've always been dismissed, politely dismissed. They say that this is a country that views us as full Canadians. But when we raise concerns, those threats aren't, those concerns aren't dealt with in the way that they should be. So I think there is immense anger at Canadian authorities. As the pressure on the regime mm -hmm. grows and grows and grows, what happens? What's the threat? Well, you saw at the end of the Second World War, a lot of the Nazis fled to Argentina or other places in South America. I worry that the same thing is going to happen as the Iranian regime comes under pressure and hopefully collapses. You're going to see agents of the regime, particularly the ones that are less well known, take their ill-gotten gains, take their foreign passports and escape to other countries. And a lot of them, I suspect, are going to be coming to Canada. This is my country. The fear isn't going away, but this is a community tired of sounding the alarm and feeling like they're all alone.